Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. I'm Ryan Beach, and for those of you that don't know me, I make videos on how to get the most out of your practice sessions, and I also make videos sharing some of the progress I've made in my own playing as well. So consider subscribing if you're not subscribed, so that way you stay updated on all of the practice tips and things like that. In this video, we're gonna be talking about mental rehearsal. What is it, how to incorporate it into your practice, and stuff like that. Mental rehearsal is something that I first learned about when reading the book With Winning in Mind by Lanny Bassam, and I started thinking about how I would incorporate it into my practice, and for about the past two months, I've been doing a version of mental rehearsal that I'll share with you in this video, and I really feel like it's been such a good thing to incorporate in my practice to really help me develop consistency in my approach to my play. In this video, I'm gonna share a few quotes that I think are helpful in framing this discussion about mental rehearsal, and then we are going to dive into what it is and how I incorporate it in my practice, and then we'll finish up by talking about why it's important. Let's dive in. I've come to understand the difference between visualization and mental rehearsal is that visualization is 100% in your mind and mental rehearsal has a component of action. You're doing something along with it. For example, I'm gonna demonstrate what it would look like for me to visualize myself playing pictures at an exhibition inside of a hall at an audition. And then here's a video clip of me mentally rehearsing pictures at an exhibition. Same kind of situation, but you'll see there's a slight difference in the way I'm executing it. One thing I wanna make very clear is I'm not trying to say one is better than the other. I think they both have their place in your routine, but from a skill development or a motor recruitment uh, standpoint or point of view, I think mental rehearsal is significantly more effective than visualization because you're going through the motions of actually doing the thing that you want to do. And in order to help you incorporate it into your practice, I'm going to give you a few pointers of the way that I incorporate it as a trumpet player. So if you're a trumpet player, try these things out. If you're not a trumpet trumpet player, try to see if you can borrow some of these ideas and incorporate it into your practice and make it effective for you. The first tip I have for mental rehearsal as a trumpet player is to finger along. You wanna pretend that you're actually doing it. One of the components of actually doing it is moving your fingers. So as you can see when I did pictures at an exhibition that I was moving the fingers exactly when I would want them to move in conjunction with when I was articulating. The next tip I have is to actually form an embouchure when you are doing the mental rehearsal. So you could see I was doing an air pattern, but I wasn't just going There was an embouchure being formed. So I was in effect trying to practice exactly what I would want in terms of the forwardness of my air, in terms of the stability of my embouchure, things like that. And finally, the third tip is to not only do an air pattern, but try to follow the shape of the line. You can see if you go back to that pictures at an exhibition, I wasn't just going but I was actually following the line. 
This is an effect trying to make sure that my air is doing exactly what I want it to do when I actually play it. Now, some of you might be watching this video and thinking, well, of course, it looks easy when you do it, but I don't know how my Airstream is supposed to go, or I don't know exactly how to go about doing mental rehearsal. And this is gonna segue right into the last part of this video of talking about why mental rehearsal is important, is because I have found mental rehearsal to be an incredibly effective tool to develop the mental model that we need to be able to play our best. What I mean by mental model is just the sound you hear in your head. We need to cultivate that and then make sure that that is coming through our instruments to be able to have our own compelling and sort of personal way of playing our instrument. It's a pretty common thing that I have encountered through teaching and just being a part of listening to especially younger students play that it's very possible to play an instrument like a trumpet and not think about what sound you want to come out at all. And in effect, you're letting the trumpet decide the sound and you're not having any effect whatsoever. When I'm doing mental rehearsal the way that I demonstrated earlier in the video, what I really believe is going through all of the physical motions of playing the instrument but not actually making sound forces my mental model to take the place of the sound. So the thing that's guiding the air, the thing that's dictating how much I'll tongue or or anything like that is the sound that I hear in my head. And so this is either going to help you connect what you're doing to your mental model, or it's gonna show you where your mental model is not actually up to par, where you may need to spend some time singing through, listening to recordings, whatever you need to do to continue to develop the mental model. If you find yourself as one of those people that when you're mentally rehearsing, you're kind of lost and unsure of what to do, this is okay. It just means that your mental model needs to be developed. This is actually a good thing to find out. Being able to recognize that you need to develop your mental model means that you'll start putting an effort to do that. And the effort of doing that will actually help you build that mental model, which will absolutely give you more compelling and personal performance in the long run. The last thing I want to address in this video is that in order to use mental rehearsal in our practice, it's going to take a lot of patience and it's going to take a bit of a mindset shift from how many of us think about practice right now. In order to be able to incorporate things like mental rehearsal, which as we described, helps build the mental model or the blueprint that you play with, which is of great use to all of us as performers, we're going to need to shift our mindset from something like, I just need to play and go through it and I'll get better if I just spend time doing it to thinking about what is the right kind of work for me to be doing in my practice session right now? Do I need to play through things or do I not quite understand it? And maybe I need to address that through some form of mental rehearsal. I really believe that when you put building a long-term successful version of yourself as a player at the forefront of what you're trying to do in all of your practice sessions, it becomes a lot easier to incorporate things like mental rehearsal and to be more patient with the process in general. All right, I think that about wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, consider giving it a like down below and don't forget to subscribe so that you can see more content like this. As always, I'll leave a link down below for a free 30 minute chat where I hopefully can help you answer questions about your own practice. And also, if you wanna practice the way I practice, check out the Gold Method app link down below as well. Thanks so much for watching the video. Always remember, stay strong, be kind to yourself, never stop growing, and we'll see you in the next video.